Hey everybody. Well, this is a video that's been long in the making, so uh, I finally got this in. This is the Factory Entertainment Star Trek The Next Generation uh, Resican Flute Replica. So uh, I've had this on order for probably, uh, it's probably been nine months. Uh, I don't think it's been quite a year. And these just came in, they just came out. So these are limited editions, and uh, I don't know what the limited edition number is, so I'll have to see if that's all inside. And this is the packaging for it. It's a really nice box. We can see uh, all the cast of the show. It's a nice little bit of artwork here on there. We got the emblem on the top, and it's the same thing in the back. So uh, I actually made a replica of the Picard Resican Flute in the box. In fact, I did two of them, and I did a, a video showing how I made those. And I'll put a link down in the description below so you can check out that video. And I'll compare this one to the one uh, that I made, or the final version that I made. All right, well, uh, let's open this up and let's see what's inside. So this card comes with it, and on here it just says uh, Resican Flute, Limited Edition, Prop Replica, Star Trek The Next Generation. And it's got this nice little stuff going on here, like the uh, the L cars that we see on the bridge. Now, this is actually the Certificate of Authenticity, you can see here. And it's got some very interesting information. So you can read, you can actually uh, pause the video here and I'll let you read all this. But it talks about the episode. And it talks about what happens to Picard during that time. And then I'll just try to go through this and you guys can pause these. And read it because it's got some you know just some information about the uh, the the prop and then over here it's just the limited edition now it says limited edition and I can't find anywhere where, where it actually has like a a number or it says how many of these they made it just says limited edition so you know usually it'll say you know like 22 of a thousand or something like that but there's nothing on here that shows that so who knows how many of these they actually are gonna make here's some more that talks about the prop itself Here's some stuff about the replica, uh, the flute part of it, not the box part of it. And then here is uh, just some instructions on how to change the uh, battery or the electronics features that's inside there. So, uh, yeah, and then on this side, it just kind of shows the flute and it talks about how you can open up the whole thing and you don't want to just let the lid drop. You want to uh, open it all the way, but don't drop the lid. And then here it talks about there's uh, some foam. You can put the foam, there is some foam that goes in the lid, but it's not what the prop actually had. So if you're going to display this, you can take the, uh, the foam out of the lid part. But if you're going to transport it, they recommend that you put the foam back inside so that the flute doesn't go, uh, you know, moving around and get damaged because there's nothing really holding it in there. And then this is just kind of how to change the batteries on the inside. And I'll show you all of that. All right, so let's uh, take a look at the uh, actual prop. Okay, so once you pull it out of the box, this is how it looks. You've got these blocks of foam right here that are holding it in place. And then interestingly, they have uh, pieces of foam right in here to keep the lid separated. Not sure what the point of that was. Possibly they don't want the uh, these parts to drag together during shipping or something. So uh, let me get these parts off and then we'll look at the box. Okay, so now looking at this outside of the packaging, the first thing I want to mention is that this thing is made of a polystone. It is not cheap plastic. I thought this was going to be something like a Sideshow Collectibles or Hot Toys uh, where it's, it's, you know, it's just plastic. That's not the case with this. This is actually very heavy. It's got some nice heft to it. It feels like it's made of a quality material. So I was very, very impressed with that. And I'm really glad they didn't use plastic. Now, looking at the texturing on this thing, that is one thing that is really hard to replicate. Now, I know the gentleman who made the original prop, and he had provided some really good close-up pictures of the original prop before they sent it to the set. And so I tried to replicate that on the one that I made. I made two different ones, and it, I still wasn't successful at doing it right. So um, looking at this one, uh, you know, it's hard for even uh, a mass-produced product like this to have the same texturing as well. I mean, it's not exactly correct either. So the original box, the original prop, it was it had a, a base coat of gray, and then they just took a toothbrush and they uh, they had just flicked a bunch of paint all over it. There was like uh, there was red, yellow, black, and like a teal color. And I think the teal and the yellow, whenever they kind of crisscrossed, they would make it look more greenish. And I think that's where the green hue comes from. Because in the pictures I was looking at, it didn't look like any green paint was used. I mean, there might have been, but I think it was mainly the teal and the yellow giving it a green look. And then um, the little speckles, you can always, you know, you can really see them if you see it close up. Now, I do appreciate the fact 
that Factory Entertainment tried to kind of replicate that with these black speckles on here because that is kind of how it looked. Um, but the rest of this is, you know, just kind of their own interpretation of it, and that's fine. And then these pieces here, uh, you know, if you look at the original prop, they, they were actually pieces of cardstock that were cut out and glued on here, and there's like maybe two layers of it. And, uh, you know, there's no way that a company could, you know, mass produce these and then cut each one of these out and glue it. I mean, that would be way too time consuming. So the fact that these are just molded in uh, is fine. I mean, it, it still looks good because the original uh, prop almost looks like it has like a maybe a finish of a shellac or something on there, which this kind of does look like also. So I think they did a pretty good job as far as, you know, trying to get it as close as they possibly could. Now here is the bottom and they got these nice little rubber feet on here. They're like felt pads. That's kind of nice that they don't, you know, scratch up the surface there. Now here you can see it says Star Trek The Next Generation and there it is. I found the uh, the limited edition number. So it is on the uh, the prop itself. Now I have no idea what number that is. That it's one something two. I'm guessing it's a five. I guess it because it looks like it was intended to be like the curved part of the five and then they just kind of put the line halfway through. So I'm guessing this is number 152. That's my guess, so uh, I don't know. <laughs> but the, it doesn't say how many they made. It doesn't say how many they made total. So I do wish uh, I knew the complete run of how many they made, but oh well. So looking at the back of this now, so we can see that the hinges are just these black hinges. I think on the original prop, um, the hinges were bigger. And I don't know if they were black. I don't know if they stood out as much as these, but I do think they were... Uh, wider across like this way from what I can remember but I mean you know it's most people aren't going to look at the back of this anyway but you know it still looks good and you can see all the texturing going on here as well so yeah it looks pretty good overall all right let's take a look at the flute yeah okay so now let's open this up and like they say don't just slam the lid down you got to be careful so here we go so uh Oh, that flute, it, look, it, it looks really good. I got to say, I'm very impressed with that. Okay, so here's that foam they were talking about. So um, if you're moving this, you know, uh, around from place to place, keep the foam in there so that this doesn't, uh, you know, rattle around and get damaged because there's nothing really that it's sitting in. I'll show you that here in just a minute. But if you're just going to display it in the open uh, box, then take that out because they actually did texture all of this. And you can see it looks really good. They did a very nice job of texturing all of that. So, um, but yeah, you want to take that out uh, so that, because the original prop did not have foam up here. And then here is uh, the way the flute is nestled in here. And this flute is absolutely amazing. Now, uh, let me take it out of here and give you a closer look at this. But I do want to point out that there is an indentation in there, but that's only because of, uh, you know, it's sitting in there from when it was being shipped. But as soon as you uh, leave the flute out for a while, that's going to come back up. So I may have to... Uh, take a blade and just kind of cut a little trough out of there uh, because I don't, I don't really like this just kind of sitting you know and and being so uh, easily moved around and I think the original prop had a little bit of a trough cut out there so uh, anyway all right so let's take a look at the flute okay so the first thing about this is that it's made of metal it is all metal it is not cheap plastic which is what I thought this was going to be made out of once again uh, I'm very impressed with the metal I mean, there's no plastic on this. It's really, really nice. It's got some, it's got some weight to it too, which I really like. It's got the kind of weight that you would expect a flute like this to have. It does have the, uh, just like the real prop, it had these little uh, silver taped stickers on here. There's the hole. There's another one here. There was a sticker back here, but I took it off. It was like a trademark sticker. It looked really ugly, so I took that off. And then here's the little uh, slit at the front. Now this flute does not play, it's not an actual flute, and uh, just like the real prop, the prop the uh, was used on the show, it, it didn't play either. <laughs> uh, it was a fake flute. Um, here we can see the uh, tassel wrappings. Now uh, I had a friend that bought one of these, and he unfortunately had some uh, glue that was soaking through the uh, soaking through this, so unfortunately, uh, hopefully he can get a replacement because it didn't look good. Thankfully mine does not suffer from that issue. So if you have glue on yours, that's not supposed to be like that. Um, here is the uh, the holes. And uh, the only inaccuracy that I can see on this is on the original prop, these, um, these holes 
or I should say the, the silver rings on here, they were just stickers that they put on the original prop, but they actually had different sizes. Uh, some of these were a little bit wider diameter than others, and these, were, these are all uniform. So that's the only thing that's not quite right. But what I do appreciate that Factory Entertainment did on this is that they did in fact use the stickers because um, when, the, uh, when the next generation went to the movies, the prop was uh, changed. The prop master decided that they wanted to put these grommets, these ugly grommets on here, and they, they kind of stuck up. And for, that flute was forever changed. I think to this day it still has those grommets on it. But the, the original version of this flute from uh, the Inner Light and uh, I think probably Lessons is that it had this smooth uh, rings on it. It did not have those grommets. So I'm glad that uh, Factory Entertainment didn't put those things on. But, uh, you know, it, it looks pretty good. And I, I gotta say, it just, it's got a nice uh, polished look to it. There's a little bit of weathering on it. You can kind of see it here. There's a little bit of, I don't know if I can get it on camera, but you can kind of see there's a little bit of weathering on it, which I like. It kind of gives it a, a little bit of a texture. But um, yeah, the weight of this is very nice. The tassel, that's the tassel right there. And it looks pretty good. It's a little frayed out from when it was shipped. So I may have to try to fix those or trim them or something. <laughs> but uh, other than that, but yeah, this is actually a very nice piece. And I'm very impressed with the quality of it. It actually looks really, really good. Now, on that card that I showed earlier, that Certificate of Authenticity, it mentioned that they uh, said that the flute was made from a couple of different tin whistles or something that they put together uh, for the prop. But it was my understanding that the original prop was actually um, a, a scratch-made thing. It was like from a, from a milled metal or a milled tubing. So I don't think it was actually made from... Um, different flutes. I mean, that's what I understood, but uh, I'd, I'd have to consult the gentleman who made the original prop. But, uh, you know, he uh, it says that this was um, made from original sources, but he said he was never contacted by uh, Factory Entertainment, which uh, is odd. You know, you'd think they would have contacted him since he's the one that made it. But um, I think they were making everything based on uh, the different times that you saw the flute and probably different variations of it because you know as we all know A lot of props don't stay the same, you know They they change them and like I mentioned these the uh, ugly grommets that were put on there for the movies So, uh, you know, I understand that you know factory entertainment has to kind of work with you know Just a, a general generalization of the different ones that we saw and I think they did a pretty good job. I really do Okay, so I just want to show the one that I made for comparison's sake. So, uh, first of all, that one is smaller than this one, and I don't know the actual size of the box, but I was kind of surprised at uh, the size of the uh, Factory Entertainment one. I'm not sure this is actual size. I mean, it might be. Um, I always thought the box was a little bit bigger, but this one here I made, um, and I did a video of uh, showing how I made this, and, and I'll put a link down in the description below and you can check it out, but I actually used a uh, box from Hobby Lobby. They have those pre-made wood things, like birdhouses and things and they have these boxes and this was the closest thing I could find to Picard's box. The only thing inaccurate about it is that um, the lid is much more uh, shallow compared to that one. See how the it comes down to the halfway point and that's what I was hoping to find there but this was the closest I could find. But here's the texturing that I was talking about. Uh, first of all I cut out all those little layers uh, of cardstock and that's how the original prop was made. It had these little things all over and they just cut it and glued it on. And then from there, they painted the whole thing with a, a gray, uh, kind of like a primer coat, I guess. And then they took a, uh, a toothbrush and they just started flicking paint on there. And so there was red, yellow, uh, a teal color, and some black. Now, I forgot to put the black on here, and I think the black would really help tone this down a lot. So I'm going to have to, uh, as soon as the weather warms up, I'm going to try to uh, put some black paint flecks on here. And uh, also, I should have watered down the yellow and the red paint so that um, it shows up a little bit more. I mean, you can see a little bit of the red here, and you can see a little bit of the yellow back here. But it should show up a little bit more because that yellow and the teal really is what gives it that green color. Because you can really see how mine looks way more teal. But see how the, uh, just like looking at it, it looks kind of gray from this angle here. And then, it, and then it looks, you know, teal again. It's just the way that it looks. It's really strange how the colors kind of play off of each other in the light. And that's how the original prop is too. It's very unusual. So you can understand how 
it would have been really difficult for uh, a mass-produced item like this to have that same kind of speckling. I mean, that would take forever to make these, and it would also probably raise the cost of those. So I do have to appreciate the fact that uh, Factory Entertainment did what they could, um, given the resources that they have to make those. So, And this one does have a flute, too, by the way. <laughs> that was an eBay special for like 35 bucks. <laughs> but it worked out good. All right, well, now let's take a look at the cool little musical feature of this one. So I forgot to mention that there are these little magnets right here on the lid that help keep it shut when you uh, close it. So they're kind of embedded in there. So that's pretty neat. All right, so uh, here's that foam. And so you, all you do is take this off. Now, this is just a really thin layer right here. And there is the little battery compartment. So you just uh, slide that uh, downward. And then two uh, AAA batteries go inside there for the sound. All right, so on the side here is a very nicely hidden button. It doesn't stand out too bad, and I think it's pretty discreet. So we just push that, and then the, the music starts. So some final thoughts on this. Um, I was really hesitant about buying this at first. I mean, the price is scary. It was $275. It's either $275 or $279. I can't remember. I pre-ordered this about uh, six months ago. I thought it was longer, but uh, it wasn't. It was about six months ago. And they were supposed to come out later in the summer, but um, actually Factory Entertainment came out with these early, and I was very pleased to see that. So that was very nice. But yes, it is an expensive piece. Um, but, you know, you got to think about, like I mentioned, the engineering and the things that go into it, the electronics. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot here. And, and I was actually very impressed with it because I thought oh, there was going to be a lot of plastic. I thought this was going to be plastic. I thought this was going to be plastic. And it's not. Um, this poly resin material is heavy and it feels good and it's, it's substantial. This is all metal. This flute is all metal and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful piece. They actually did a really good job on this. And the sound quality is actually very crisp and clean. I was actually very surprised. I thought it was going to be either too low or um, tinny sounding and it's not. It sounds really, really good. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's expensive, but you got to think about what all went into making something like this, the engineering and the the cost of materials and everything else and they got to make money on it you know I mean it's not just for us to take <laughs> so um, if you are thinking about getting one of these I mean you know yes yeah think about it it's a lot of money to spend for something like this but I think it's really well done I think it looks really good it's a fantastic display piece and if you are as crazy about that episode of Star Trek The Next Generation The Inner Light which is such a great episode it's definitely probably like the top five fan favorite episodes of the series and this uh, flute was a very integral part of that show, that episode. And think of it this way. The original prop sold for something like $17,000 at auction. <laughs> and uh, Patrick Stewart, as he laughed about, said it wasn't a real flute and it didn't actually play. And so he was actually kind of getting a, a laugh out of that. So at least we're not paying $17,000 for these. <laughs> but it's a really nice piece. And I have to give a tip of the hat to Factory Entertainment because I think it actually is a nice quality piece. It was way better than I thought it was going to be. I was not expecting this to be as good as it was. All right, well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this review. And if you did, please give it a like and also subscribe if you'd like. I'd really appreciate it. So thank you so much for watching. I very much appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next episode. So thanks again and have a good one.